to that sleep. And when I combine those, I will find myself in the place God created me to be, and that's in his glory. I am supposed to be an instrument. You are supposed to be an instrument of glory. Y'all know that? Y'all know that? We're going to get some energy one way or the other. Instrument of his glory. That's how he feels about you. That's what he sees. Despite you know, what you've gone through, despite how you may have mishandled your life up to this point, he still holds on to his intentions for you. That's all Tam was just saying. God keeps speaking to his intentions, not my own. And so I have been, if he, if he desires glory for me, what, did that, what does that say about my capability? I'm absolutely able. I'm able to do that. Uh, it made me think back to um, Psalm 8. And I, I allude to that quite a bit. Psalm 8, I think, verse 4. When the angels are talking to God, y'all know the text. It says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou art visited? And he says that you made him a little bit lower than the, than the other one. And you have crowned him with glory. Crowned him with glory. It's talking about you. I don't, want, I don't want you to see some fictitious character. I need you to see you, place you in the text. He has crowned Jackie. He has crowned Mother Carter. He's crowned with glory. What is that a picture of? Yeah, when, is a, when, when does a king crown another person? No. They became a victorious. Think about it. If they're, if they're exchanging the throne, the king ain't crowning you. Either the king is dead or you don't took it. When does the king crown you? Say that again, Charles. Absolutely. When the king has given you a territory, there is a coronation. And to prove to others who are watching that you now have the sanction and the backing of the kingdom, the king hands you a crown. He crowns you. What's that got to do with you? And you got what? Territory. He's got a territory. But to get that territory, you got to be with him. What's the text say? Crown you. What's glory? How do you operate somebody's reputation? Imitate him. He said, there's a place for you that you've already been delegated for. He said, but you don't have the full backing of it because you don't act like me. Are y'all hearing me? And so even the angels realize that about you, they're still waiting on a revelation from you, for you to hear. Do y'all hear? Because if you really trust what God's saying, so listen, our, this has already been done. You just, our, we're just waiting on you to realize who you are in us. You have been crowned. And so the only way I can obtain this territory and operate in the glory of God and to act like this portion of God, because truth be told, I don't have enough for me to act like God in his totality, right? Therefore, he only gave me a portion of him to imitate. And we call that what? Vision. Vision. Please understand that. So I've got to, I've got to hear this thing that God has called me into. But let me, let me go back. Uh, uh, so so if, 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 the king, if the king delegates the territory to you, crowns you in that territory, who's responsible for taking care of you? The king. He's not the of function of a king because you're in one. And so if, 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 if there was a king in the United States and they gave me South Africa, who fights my battles? The United, the United States fights my battles. Doesn't that sound like what God told you? When he said, this, this ain't yours, this battle ain't? That's right. Ain't yours? You see, he talks to us in king language. And so I have the full backing of the kingdom of God. And he says, when they start bothering you, remind them I'm the Lord of hosts. 
Host means what? War. You don't want to fight me. You don't want to, because my, my, my servant ain't going ain't to break a sweat. I got this. And see, I've been thinking about that the last 48 hours as I've been thinking about the islands of the Bahamas. Because they're no longer province of evil. And so if they were going through the storm and still were under the providential uh, over, oversight of England, who would be responsible for their repair? Amen. And now that they're independent. Hmm. I'm worried. I'm worried for them. And now, since they're independent on their own, they, they've got to wait on the mercy of the world. And so now, whenever you step out from under the providential care of God, because you want to be your own man and your own woman, you have defected from the kingdom. Who's responsible for your care? Are you a match? You never know what storms may come up in your life. And so you and I have been called to have a vision. Let me ask the question. Who in here has a vision for their life? Y'all tickle me. Y'all want to raise your hand. Because I get, in all honesty, the first answer should have been, really is, God has one for me. Even if I don't know what it is. God has a vision for me. There will be no way he will put me in this earth without him having a plan for me. Right. See, so please, please notice about you. When God decided to send your soul to the earth, mm. when God decided, I need you to see that. Your mom and daddy got together, had a little fun, they made a body. Genetically speaking, those 16 chromosomes combined together in the full moon, there was a shell. But the personality had to be delivered by God person in the body. So when God decided to send you into the earth, please know this, that he had an expected end in mind. UBI, whose expectations was it? God's, not yours. The whole expected end notion was God saying, I've got expectations. And so in order for those expectations to be fulfilled, God had to give you the ability to fulfill those and so he sent you here with this vision, with this dream, to carry out his wishes. And so, as this first line says, God's desire, which, which, here's what your vision is. Your vision is God's desire and place of provision, but your option. God's desire. God had a desire, so he created you within himself, put you, sent you into your bloodline, into your family, into your body, but you still belong to God. But also, when God sent you, he cannot give you this vision without provision. What does provision mean? Anybody? He provides it for you? Yes. It literally means to be arranged in it. The Bible tells Jehovah Jireh, the nature of God, is that his provider because the cease was coming. It says to this, that you have to have the faith to know this, that all, all your vision is, when you, when you wake up to what God called you to do, it's announcing to you what God has already provided in advance. Mm. It's not, he's not providing it as you go along. See, your, your fear keeps telling you that you got to wait on God to hook and crook something together for you. And God said, that's not my nature. My nature is such that it was already prepared before you got your awareness of the vision is announcing what's already in the earth, what's already been at work for you. That's why he, that's why Paul could tell the church of Corinth, who was trying to grow in this thing, what did he tell them? He said, eyes have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what? What the Lord has prepared. It didn't say what God is preparing. When God finished, he finished. When he finished, he finished. You and I are left 
to endure the scavenger. But it's he. You have to believe that. That God wouldn't call you to it if the provision wasn't already laid out in the earth. But the thing I need you to understand is that with all of God's free work, because he gave you a free will, you get to opt out of doing all of it. Mm. And we have for various reasons. What are we opting out? Fear. Fear of failure. Failure. Fear of failure. How do we fail? We're not doing it. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. I mean, those, that, 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 those are wonderful answers, but <laughs> let's, let's, be, let's be a little bit more realistic. How have we declared we fail? Okay, we come out. We made a mistake. Question Has God provided for all of us? Is, it, isn't all of that built into it? Did, 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 did God provide and have even have the expectation that you're going to miss it? Yeah. And what, what are we scared of? We don't believe. Hmm? We don't believe. We don't believe. No, you asked uh, why we should. I just said because we're not, not responding according. Say, I'm sorry, I didn't say. Not, not responding according. Okay. We don't believe it. How thick is it resonating with you in your unbelief? <laughs> what you say? Got the joker, the deuce. <laughs> no, for real. In your unbelief, even in your unbelief, what's his track record? <laughs> we saw him. Here we are, 18, 24 years old, 36, 68, whatever it is, and God has an impeccable track record with you, and we're still saying I'm scared. I don't think, I don't know they're going to come through. If God, if God wasn't God, because <laughs> you know, he know we're going to say it, but if it wasn't God, I can have God. What else I got to do? Here you are. One of the things that shook me up one time in, in my conversation with God was, was this statement. And I've shared it with y'all a while back, but I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Pam, how you going to tell me no? With the breath I just gave you. <laughs> with the breath I just gave you. Uh, and <laughs> am I going to fight you and hold my breath? I'm going to be disobedient and need you at the same time. I can't, I can't trust you, God. <laughs> Isn't that what we're doing? I don't think you're going to come through, Travis. And even thinking that I ain't got nothing to do with the sunlight, this wind, this breeze. And I'm the steady breathing the air you let me borrow. And claiming him to be unfaithful. It's more than fear. What else? The way we were taught. Give me more. Um, you were taught to be independent. We're taught to rely on yourself. We're taught not to trust or relate to people. I wonder if God said, what you got to do? Trust <laughs> <laughs> And I get that. But that's that's why, you know, the, the, the an incredible portion of the scripture is dedicated to how we relate to each other. So that, we, so, that, so that we learn how to so that we learn how to relate without throwing away the tenets of our faith. This is what we do. We, we have issues with each other, so we punish God. 
We have disappointments with one another, and so we throw away faith. We have difficulties with each other, so we throw away trust. We throw away hope. As if the person I'm claiming who shattered my hope is really in any worse state than me. Because I've done some jacked up stuff too. And now we're claiming that this relationship has to be right with God. I don't do like that training. If I'm mad at Jack, it's I don't like you. That's kind of. What'd you say? And still crazy. So we don't mind it correct each other. No, not at all. Well, at all? Okay, that's the trend. So, um, we don't always do a good job. We don't always do a good job, but some of us, some of us want the separation regardless of how we package it. Um, should correction have a little sting to it? Let's <laughs> see what's amazing with y'all as we're talking. Y'all know the truth and reject the truth. All at the same time. Because as Ursula Ur was talking about the difficulty of receiving corrections, she got a ton of amens and I asked her, should it should it sting a little bit over? What's the purpose of the sting? What's the purpose of the sting? To correct. To correct. To correct. It gets your attention. Gets your attention. Pain says something here. Is that a friendship? Can you circumvent friendship? Why are you fussing at it? Because you know what you're doing? By avoiding the sting, you're setting up the blow. When I showed up to church, you know, my, my, my grader had this thick thing there and she could pinch the fat part of my back. But I'd rather have that than the whooping. Pinch me, but don't tell my mom. So I'd rather have a little bruise on my thigh than the wrath of me a lot of But if we understand, and see what's, what's amazing with us is that, that comprehensively we understand how this is supposed to be. Yet we're objecting to it instead of allowing it to work. And knowing that you're, listen, your objection will not alter God's plans. God is not changing because you're crying. God is not changing because you don't like how he does it. So he's like, oh, yeah, it's going to it's it's hurt a little bit. But it's going to hurt a little more later. So it behooves you to correct me. Yeah. Yeah. Why allow yourself to continue to go the wrong way, knowing that the pain that you now objected to will be increased? 
That's what wisdom is supposed to be teaching us. Stop now. Receive now. Receive the correction. Value the correction more than your image. You think that just got shattered because you got corrected. Because the image, watch this. If you need a correction, the image you're protecting is wrong. You're trying to promote an image that's flawed. You're protecting something that's crippling you when you had a chance to be made over better. And the cost of being made over is a little steep. Does that make sense? And until we get that, we just keep digging deeper and deeper. And so, and, and, that, and that, thank y'all for saying the sharing what you just did. Again, because now it also tells you why you need to master it. Because this, this, this thing that we're pursuing for God and for ourselves. Because again, I want to be in the place of God's provision. I want to be in the place where God gets to show me his glory and, and, and show me what I'm made for. And so this whole tenacity thing is trying to instruct me that if I'm coming here to change things, to change things for God, that opposition is built into it. Pain is built into it. But I still don't get around the notion of I've been called to occupy two realms. Now you understand when, when the scripture tells us that occupy KP is, is both a business term but also a, a military term. Uh, if I'm occupying, as I've said to you guys before, the, the, the reason why folks in the Middle East and Al-Qaeda and all those folks don't like us is because we're occupying. We're, we're, we're in a place that they believe is theirs. And so they are upset with us. That is a natural picture of what happens spiritually. There's an enemy who had claim over your family. There's an enemy that claim over the city. And when you come in trying to do it God's way, you're trying to displace, push out, remove the influence of the enemy. That's war. And so there should be some resistance against you. And that's one of the things we have to learn about this because it, 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 go, it goes against your nature because you're still trying to figure out why so many people fight me, why, why so many people fight me, and I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to do good. I can understand y'all being mad at me when I was tripping, but when I was tripping, I was everybody's friend. Yeah. That's true. Because I was contributing to the, to the destruction of a place that was already in process. But when I decided I want to work for God, now I'm going upstream. And so I'm shaking folk up, starting with my household. Does that make sense to you? So I gotta have this, this mentality that once he has shown it to me, whatever shows up, I still gotta get to it. I still gotta get to it. And I know something's gonna show up. And, and if it get too easy, I think I missed God. If ain't nothing coming at you, then you ain't going upstream anymore. You going down with the you, you rolling with the wind. You think that? Yes, the territory that he's given you. Especially, especially those, those folk who know us intimately. 
it's, it's, it's the ones that thought you never changed are the ones who are mad that you changed. And there are a lot who, who, who give themselves a pass by judging themselves off of you. And so if you're still tripping, as long as you ain't tripping, fight it hard. Huh? It'll let you finally get your stuff together. You become a living epistle. You become a walking billboard. You become walking conviction. Conviction, the ability to turn, the ability to change. You remind them, especially if they know you intimately. They know your struggles. They know your secrets. And they still see you. God bless you. And they say, what excuse are you? I'm frustrated with you. And so what the enemy will do with us is manipulate us at the need for relationship. And so our comfort will grow by making you feel like you're going to lose me. And so I'm in a position, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn. Because you know, I was going to say this at the slide later, but I'll give it to you now. Is that when, when, you, when you come at the vision that God has given me, you put me in a position of being torn because I gotta, I'm trying to figure out how to accommodate you and God. And, 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 and that's really not a place you should ever win. You should ever win. Because I've, I've got to trust that what God has for me is going to not only prove my but he could give you an example of what improvement looks like. That's better for you than for me to remain where I am. Even if remaining where I am makes you comfortable, this comfort is killing us. Right. It's not only killing us, it's influencing our, our children's children, our nieces and our nephews. We're setting a paradigm for them to find themselves trapped in because we're their template, we're their model. And so somebody got to be courageous enough to go with tears in your eyes and, 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 and lonely and go, send me. Send me. I, I know they're going to talk about me. Send me. And the only way you can do that is when the Holy Spirit, Scripture says the Holy Spirit comes in and he moves in between and he gives you this love. And now you got this love in your heart for folk. And, and, and you're like, you don't think I love you, but I'm going to love you, and I'm going to do this. Even with, even with you being mad, I'm going to trust that God shows you later on. And God's already proved that to some of you already, because you had to go through seasons of rejection until they were able to catch up with what God was doing to you. And some come to you like Nicodemus at night. They show out in public, but they come to you at night. They finally tell you, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but don't but don't but don't feel bad about them. Don't 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 look down at them because they come at you at night because you gotta remember the same opposition you went through and they over here looking at the same op they they was in a, they was part of the opposition. So they know what the opposition can do. And now they're looking at coming over to where you are where the rocks are being thrown. Mm -hmm. It takes courage to even show up at night. Does that make sense? So without this tenacity. How does this play into this whole idea with it? Well, let me say this right here. This vision that you got, everybody raised their hand and said, I got a vision. At least most of you did. The manifestation of the vision requires <sighs> agreement. It requires agreement. You have to understand that what God's calling you to. You can't do it alone. Can't do it alone. That's why Habakkuk said, what about a vision? What did he say in Genesis chapter 2 and 2 and 3? Somebody say it. Right. Write the vision and make it plain so that they can run with it. He that he, who the he? This thing won't move till that he shows up. Because you know, God requires me to listen. God says, I ain't coming unless at least two of you did. Then he said, wherever there are two, I'll be in the midst. That's a prerequisite. Because what you got to understand is God's ultimate goal is to build himself a body. The vision he's given is going to draw somebody to you. And see, I didn't understand that when I started the ministry because I was like, nobody's going to want to do this. He said, if I gave it to you, watch. I told, like I told you before, I told God, I said, man, I'm going to spoil my church. But these 12 folks all got my last name. 
And he's like, you don't understand vision. And what happens is something about it will resonate with you. It will ignite your faith. That's the same scene you see with Mary and Elizabeth. John the Baptist is in the room of Elizabeth, and the Bible said he had no. But John had no purpose outside of the cross. So until Mary showed up with the baby, John had no reason to live unless he was going to be the forerunner to the cross. And so once his reason for living showed up, the baby leaped in the blood. When you connect with the sound, when you connect with the folks that resonate with you, something leaps in you. You're like, I, I, I'm home. I'm home. These are my people. This is my tribe. This is where I'm supposed to be, at least in this season. And so it requires a movement. And so you have this situation. We, we, we might move back around and talk about it a little bit more in a minute. But Jacob was motivated not for, you know, because again, you hear people talk about this story. They make it seem like Jacob was just obsessed with Rachel. He was not. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob was manipulative and cheating for the birthright. He wanted to be the, the, the person who carried out the vision of the family. It was, it was all about vision for Jacob. And so he shows up with this vision and he runs into this person because the vision requires agreement and he runs into Leah and Leah has this the whole eyesight thing was about split, split vision, deception, all of those things that are opponents to the vision. And I don't want to talk about that, Jacob. I'm trying to get to another slide. But when he saw in Rachel, man, I'm going by that. We'll come back to all that. You know, I do need to see this last point. <coughs> Rachel versus Leah. This is the point I needed you to get to, where tenacity is concerned. Tenacity can overcome anything self delusion. The whole idea of tenacity is that you know I gotta go for my goals regardless of the obstacles that are placed in front of me. But vision requires agreement. And so the moment I'm hooked to you but you decide to be the vice of the Halts everything. Everything we were doing together comes to a screeching halt. No matter how tenacious I am, because Jesus said, "A house divided can't stand. A movement divided can't stand. A ministry divided can't stand. A marriage divided can't stand. All these things are designed for unity and being able to move forward. Require agreement. How can we work together? Well? Except that we agree, the moment the vision comes into play, my tenacity is what I'm going to do. Making you, if I'm making you, it, that, that, that destroys the whole concept of a vision. Does it? Doesn't. Yeah. And so you see Jacob's dilemma. I got Leah over here who looks like. She's playing off that she can handle the vision because she can have babies. I've got Rachel over here who's having a hard time having babies. But she with me. Do I choose the one who's with me or the one who looks like they won't get me? Let me tell you the answer. <laughs> and, 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 and so I'm telling you this so y'all can understand me better when y'all frustrated with me about some of my decisions and why you're not moving as quickly as you want to move these positions and all that kind of stuff. Listen, I got enough tenacity to deal with your eye roll. I got enough tenacity to deal with you doing little silly stuff behind my back. But I don't have tenacity to put you in a place where your split vision can cause destruction. Until I believe you see what I see. And if your vision was greater than mine, you have something. And you wouldn't be trying to get me to give you a place. Am I making sense? If you're mad at me for a spot, but you're greater than me, you don't need me. 
You may say, Brother Ruth, what do you need me for? If you that bad, go be bad. But if you need my vehicle, then here's the name. Operate my vehicle according to instruction. That's so arrogant. That's only spoken by those who haven't built it. That's another lesson. Quit listening to folk who are telling you you're arrogant, you control, and you all of this, and they ain't built nothing. I promise you, everything you try to get them to do becomes real when they try to do it. That's normally when they circle back around and go, hey, can you get can I talk? Can I get it? No. Choose the one who's with you, with the weakness. Because our tenacity is to get over the weakness. Am I making sense? Um, yeah. Choose the one who is with you with the weakness? That's what my tenacity is for. I've got I've got people in this ministry that work closely with me and I know their flaws. Some of y'all know their flaws. And the reason and they don't want why why are these people close to me? Because they're with me. I don't have that script. I don't have that issue. But the issue you have too is that you don't have loyalty. I don't see commitment. Truth be told, you want to use me to have access to my resources to do your thing. Now, if you really knew me, all you had to do was tell me the truth. Because how, how many of y'all have I helped with your thing? I show him. If you straight up with me, I'll break you off some. <laughs> I'll sit home with you, but don't manipulate me by pretending to be a son or daughter so you can cozy up with my best help. <laughs> Under an absent of the spirit. Out of meetings and parking lots and hallways and coffee shops. Because <laughs> your listen, your confidant has a confidant. Mm. Always make a way back to me. And I'm mature enough not to treat you funny. I'm just I'm just talking in general terms, so if it hits you, let it hit you. <laughs> but I see what you're doing. And I'm not withholding you because I'm mad at you. I'm withholding you because I love you. Because I can put you in the spot and watch you suffer. I can put you in the spot and watch you suffer. Because again, if you think you got to manipulate yourself into a position, that says you're not anointed for it. Anointment removes the requirement for manipulation. God makes a place for you. It's my place. It's my territory. I'm crowned for it. Which means I'm a cook for it. I'm a raising wisdom for it. I can handle it. Mommy? Yes, sir. All of his disciples were flawed. Peter was a trip, but he was down. Laws and all, but he was down. All right, let's move on. And so this was another question y'all asked that I, that I kind of glossed. Actually, I didn't even address it. I was going to talk about it. Um, why would, um, why send him to his family? Doesn't that kind of freak you out a little bit how they call this in that bother y'all a little bit? Yeah. What's that? But well, why would it? 
<laughs> Eric said, keep the money. That's close. It's close. We, I'm, I'm on the same. I'm, yeah, eventually we're going to get somebody, but. <laughs> And so they're trying to keep the blessing in the bloodline. Because the moment that the woman left the family, she became a member of another bloodline. And so did her descendants. See, some of y'all look at that and like, show your small nose or whatever, because it seems very extreme to do that to protect your family. But many of us. Many of us have allowed strange people with strange things to encroach upon our families because we didn't protect the blood. Line. So it's not it's not necessarily having sex with your cousins or what have you. But the fact is, how hard are you working to make sure that the blessing permeates your blood? Line? They were trying so hard that they went to extremes. We we won't even go to people's house because we ain't been talking to each other in five years. We need some kids. We won't confront one another doing crazy stuff because we don't we ain't worried about the bloodline permeating the, the blessing permeating the whole family. So that's that's what you see with that. So he sent him to the land of Abraham's brother to try to make sure that the family got in. Make sure the family got in on the blessing. You did you hear that? Because remember, Abraham left them. And so here they are circling back around, trying to pull family in. Yes, ma'am. So I guess that's what I think about my family. Um, there were certain people that my family was like, you don't mess with that family, or you don't date this family, or you don't, and we could never understand it. We just knew you don't date that family. So that's what they were doing. That's what that was about, though. Wow. <laughs> They crazy over there. It's in their DNA. <laughs> they did boy even have a crazy baby. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they? Yeah. Everybody's supposed to see my great aunt. <laughs> Who you date, baby? Oh no, no, no. no. My mother loved her. Uh -huh. I'm telling you. And what's funny is that not to have a salad. <laughs> they were spot on. Wow. And you someone who I should have listened. Now I got this child by you. <laughs> and now we look forever. <laughs> All right. So what does the vision require? Full Christ which is a reflection of your faith. How many of y'all was, <laughs> that's not a good question to ask, ask. Oh well. <laughs> How many of y'all are still nickel and dime in your vision? What does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> your vision don't lay away. And you ain't made a payment in years. <laughs> Full price means I'm going for it. Because watch this. Listen, this, if, if, if the vision, if the vision is revealing my righteousness, and my righteousness says what? Who I ought to be. And if it's who I ought to be, why am I halfway going? Oh God. Okay. I'm 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 nickel and dime. If it is who I'm supposed to be. Why, why am I part-timing occasionally yes, when I feel yes, like sir. it, yes, working on my vision? Yes, sir. When it's who you are supposed to be. What else, what, what you doing if you're not being who you supposed to be? So it makes sense as to why it requires full progress. Because I don't want you putting your mind somewhere else. Because you'll be, watch this, you'll be, you'll be paying with time for something that's not you. Jesus. 
Yes. He ain't paying for money. He's paying, he paying, he paying with, with, with time. How much time have you wasted? Trying to do something, be something that ain't even you. And thinking that you're going to meet God there. Still offering God a blemish offering. Because of whatever reason I give him, I'm, I'm afraid. It's my upbringing, it's my conditioning. All of that, that's true for everybody in here. But we've been exposed to truth too. And the moment God showed us truth, he gave us choice. And when he gave us choice, he gave us power. And so we can't change. Do I make sense to you? So even, 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 if I'm, even if I'm moving at a slow pace, I ought to still be moving in the right direction. This, there ought to be, well, not, 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 not against the credence when David said, teach us to number our days. Quit spending our days on stuff we're not. Because imagine, imagine, <laughs> Imagine becoming who you're not. Because that's what most of us are doing. We're becoming who we're not. So when you get there, what? No satisfaction, no peace, no nothing. And you avoid the pursuit of you because you call yourself protecting your peace. When truth be told, but biblically, that's false too. Because Christ says, listen, he said, I give my peace to you, mm -hmm. not the peace of the world. Because the peace of the world is when I become so many, so, so multi-dimensional in my personality that I please everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's a false sense of peace because I'm a people pleaser. And so ain't nobody at odds with me because I become who you need me to be when you want me to be. Except who I need me to be. But the peace of God like this is transcendent. I know you're mad, but I'm good. I'm good. I know you don't like the direction I'm going, but I ain't good. Good means what? I'm in agreement. I'm good. I've got this peace in me. I can't even explain. I'm in peace. I see, I see you over here. I can see it, but I'm good. Now, if I'm trying to please you, I'm like, what's wrong? <laughs> you roll your eyes and like, because hey. I'm good. Because I'm learning I can get there without you. Amen. I love for you to go. Now, hear me. Don't celebrate with me if you ain't on the road. I ain't asking for your flaws at the words I say. Because I'm, I'm oftentimes watching folk yield to the pressure of the church environment and clapping amen like they're on the right road. And you ain't. There, there ain't no proof that's, that's saying that you're becoming who you're supposed to be. It's not. It's not. You're all over the place. And the thing is, we see what we love and love not to say that. It's kind of living you like that. When, when you're ready, I'll let you. I'm not making sense. And so that's why we're not moved by your tantrums. When you, when, you, when, you, when you begin to become solid in God and solid in who you're becoming, not completely God, I'm, I'm not moved by your falling out. By your, that's, that's, that's you exhausting and wearing yourself out and wasting time you can't recover. It's best for you to go ahead and move. Because the longer you wait, man, the harder this thing is to bear. I was told a long time ago, what's worse than mistakes is regret. Mm. I can get over mistakes, amen? But regrets, regrets are a partnership with time. And some stuff get trapped in time, and I can't go back and get it. I missed it. Now I gotta live without it. And I know it was mine. Am I right about it? So I gotta pay full price for it. And so if I do this vision thing, let me get you with these and we'll get you out of here. What's so incredible about vision is that vision unlocks hope, power, focus, and resources. All
the stuff you're afraid you're not going to have. Vision of lots. You're afraid you're not going to have it because you never really tried to operate in your vision. So you don't even know. But you're acting like you know. So it unlocks what first thing is hope. The Bible says, y'all know this quote, Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you what? Hope and a future. God's plans for you is God's vision for you, right? And he says, I plan to give you hope. What's amazing, when you look up that word hope, the first word that comes up is the word cord or rope. Why would God say hope is like a rope? What'd you say? I said something you can hold on to. If, 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 if you're in a rut, a hole, a place you ain't supposed to be, mm -hmm. a rope says I'm getting ready to get, get out. out. Mm -hmm. God is saying I'm talking you to mm -hmm. This vision that you keep telling me no to, Causing you a rope. And if you allow me to pull you out, I'll prosper you. Does that make sense? And so picture yourself in a hole turning down the rope. Because you're somewhat saying, I just don't believe nobody on the other end. I don't believe it. Because if you're in a hole and a rope come down, are you worried about how much you weigh? Are you even worried about what the end for you? <laughs> Don't you stand up? You, you, you ain't care, y'all. You don't care about that. Whether they break or not, I'm gonna see how far I can get up before it does. Am I making sense? So I'm, I'm gonna grab it. Is there much hesitation? I, I done been somewhere for two moments and I, and I look cold. Oh. Hope is here. So he said, this thing you rejected is the rope. Because God is letting you know you're in a place you don't belong. You stay in a pit long enough, you, you'll see what's, 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 what's true about us because I'm, you know, growing up in the hood as a kid, you know, you, you, if, if you're in a place that's beneath you, you'll do the best to make it home. When truth be told, we ought to make it as uncomfortable as possible. That's so where I want to get out of it. Does that make sense? Power, we talked about that today. That's exousia. When God gives you, listen to this, when God gives you a vision, that's his way of letting you know that the prison door is not locked. It's not locked. The thing that you lock in, the thing that you think you're limited to, a vision says you now have a choice. You can come out of it. Or you can stay in it. And so we never, he never gets this thing where you don't get a chance to stay where you are. That's why so many people die with their vision still intact inside of them. Now you have the ability to walk out of the scene and listen to this. So, so the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the, par the paraclete. Does anybody know what that means? Anybody know? Say it again, April. Walks alongside. So for him to do, it also means counselor, which means the word counselor literally means the one who gives counsel, legal counsel. So if he's walking alongside of me, he's calling me what? A king. But he can't do his job unless I'm lost. And so you're like, man, I'm, most, most of us say, well, I'm going to sit here and wait till I hear the Holy Spirit. I think I heard the Lord, but I'm going to sit here and wait for another sign. It's like, so you need to move. You need to do something. But what if I take the wrong step? I lead you into all truth. I can't direct you until you move. I'll tell you, is there any difference in GPS system? Like I told you, you got GPS. She gonna shut up till you move. She'll tell you where you are. Tell you where you gotta go. You stay in the parking lot, don't move. She she don't talk again until you start to move. 
And when you come up to the road, which ain't nothing but a decision, mm -hmm. then she speaks again. Mm -hmm. Turn left. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. She's not, she not at the church. She's going to go, all right, go right, turn left. Uh, she don't give you the whole instruction. But we've been asking God, give me the whole thing before I pull out the parking lot. He said, no, you got faith says you're going to move. And then right when you get to it, I'll tell you what it's time. Jack. Reroute. <laughs> and if you got a good one, it, before you even move, it, it give you options. It give you, and, and if, if you hit a roadblock, you to redirect you. Some of them give you the shortest distance. Am I making sense? And they have you going, you know, it'll have you going places and you mad because it took you off the side roads and you don't know where it protected you from. Ooh. Some of y'all been fussing at God because he took you down the side road and you want to stay on 85. You didn't know what happened down the road. <laughs> Come on now. And he won't even tell you. You might get home later and see the news. Because it wasn't needed for what you was doing. It gives you focus without a vision of people to what? Perish, yeah. where it means cast off restraint. I'm open to whatever comes. Uh, and resources, God said, I supply all of your need. According to my riches in glory, I got to be in pursuit of God's glory to have access to God's riches. I got to be in pursuit of God's glory to have access to God's riches. You asking God for stuff and you ain't doing nothing. You're asking God for stuff to prove to you He's real, and He just lets you break. But you want more stuff, you got to do something. I got to be in pursuit of His glory. This last point. That's the thing that got me. So Jacob was in pursuit of vision of which he needed help. They sent him to get, not Rachel, they sent him to get help. I need help with my vision. And so he went looking for his help, not specifically Rachel. And, and the Holy Spirit took me back to um, um, Genesis. And God says, you know, it's not good for man to live alone. He says, so. I'm going to prepare for him a helper suitable for him. What blew my mind was that, you know, I've never looked up what the word suitable meant until today. And it blessed me because it really clarified this whole idea about Rachel. You know, Rachel was fine and all that stuff. And that's wonderful to have, but it wasn't anything. And this word suitable described it. Did y'all know that this, this word suitable means substance? Meaning, I'm going to send him help with substance. Yeah. Mm. It ain't enough for you to be cute. That's right. You got to have something in you to help me get to the vision. You got to show up with something. Many times we try to partner and connect because we see what they have. You don't know what you have. If you don't know you got substance to bring to the table, mm. you shouldn't be part of it. And substance that's in alignment with what? Vision. Not substance to get you. Mm -hmm. If we get together, that's cool. But the main thing is that we gotta we gotta present a vision to this God about us when we stand before him. Does it make sense? So it ain't helpful if it ain't got substance. Help. And so when he saw her, she was with what? She'd already learned the skill. She was a shepherdess. It's like him. I got somebody who got work in him. And so scripture says, don't be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. What did I teach you that the yoke was for? Work. Work. You only put the yoke on the ox when it's time to work. You're supposed to be looking at folk who can work with you. Marrying folk who can work with you. Being a minister of folk who can work with you. We're not getting here because our personality is jail. Can you do the work? Because we're going to be judged by the work, not how well we got along. Does it make sense to you? And so you got to show up with something. 
So now all the scriptures start to tie together. So if wisdom is the principal thing, all I'm doing is trying to stock up on some church stuff. That's why our Bible also says when a man finds a woman, he finds a good thing, no? Mm -hmm. When a man finds a wife, it's meant that she learned how to be a woman before she found him, before the man found her. He didn't try to become one after the wedding. It's hard to become something when you're already in the assignment. Let's let y'all go. I don't worry about it. I'm teaching. Okay. Stand up. Amen. 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 <laughs> Women's Conference, please thank y'all for those of you who contributed to the $25 session. Uh, please continue to help us with that. And the account of the encounter, the worship experience will be here on this Friday. All right. Comments, questions, criticisms? Did you get what you needed? I need y'all to go to bed early tonight. Y'all need some rest. Y'all want me out. I ain't give you no energy tonight. Thank you, but y'all know how tired y'all make me. You just said something that, but you said them as if they were the same thing and they're not. You said, um, it's, it, you said, it's, God will show you something, and you know that's not who you are. And you say, you know that's not what you're capable of. Two totally different things. When, when, when God tells you a vision, he's announcing who you are. Now, it's your responsibility to develop the capability. When you're coaching a young man, coaching the offensive line, right? Uh, and they show up, they don't know nothing, right? Why do you even coach them? Where does that come from? Where does it come from? You ever had a player that no matter how much you coach him, you, you never got it? I know you want to think, say you go from all the way up. <laughs> but in the reality of coaching, where are you? Where are you bringing that ability from? So it's who they really are. You just show them. You just pulling out capability. How do you pull out the capability? Mm, what else? Suddenly realize what? Same kid who said he couldn't. And then what God does to you? That's all he's doing. Say it, talk to me, bro. Who you point you pointing at somebody? Or talk? What? You got a question? I do. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. About what? Uh, tenacity. Mm -hmm. You were saying that um, it can get over pretty much anything except for disagree, division, right? So if you're still focused on the goal, but then there's division, um, so that means you have to um, cut some things out, possibly some people out, right? Yes. So when while you're cutting that part out, the division out, right? Mm -hmm. You're not static because you're cutting. Okay. And, and that takes up a, a tremendous amount. Uh, it, it's hard 
the whole idea of making a decision where decision needs to cut away. And so it, one of the most difficult parts about our lives is, is the whole consecration, sanctification part of it. That I will learn at different junctures in my life who can't go. And I gotta make that tough decision. And so that's why you that's why you can still see in the Bible that Abraham and Lot. You know, God clearly said, Boy, well, don't, don't take nobody. Don't take, you can take them, 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 don't take nobody else. But the reality of it is, is that our, 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 our love and our affections for folk who aren't prepared will try to force them into maturation. We'll try to process them. When they have to when, when, when the maturity comes through through you volunteering yourself for growth. And so sometimes we gotta get out of people's way so that God can get his hands back on them mm -hmm. and process them. We buffer a lot of people. Yeah. We do. And it slows us down from our obedience. And so in effect, what we're doing is being torn between them and God. <clears throat> and so I've got to choose God if that means I've got to disappoint you. And, and the reality of it is, I, see, and here's the part that we're going to think about, is that, is that mother, I, I think if I stay with you, I'm really trying to tell myself I'm so important to you. That, that if I leave you, you won't go. As if, God, I know you died, but they need me. No, no. No. If God, has, if God had a plan for them before you were born. And you may not be in it. Does that make sense? And when we start thinking in terms of eternity, you know, Maybe we, maybe we ain't going to be cool over here, but we've got all of eternity to hang out. Does that make sense? I've got to obey. I've got to obey God. And that's going to cost you. It is. He was very clear about that, wasn't he? He, 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 he didn't tell you, everybody that started with you going to be with you. Jesus had 5,000 plus following him until he made one sermon. One sermon. One sermon. And they were wrong. He went from mega church to a storefront <laughs> and changed the world. The storefront with Judas. <laughs> Judas was the trustee. Lord have mercy. Stand as we pray for our trustee. <laughs> Thank God. Thank you. You see how we prove that your answer is even you? so that they can be equipped with wisdom to master the tools to advance your kingdom, the tools to protect their bloodline. Thank you, God, that at the end of the day, they still have time and desire for you. Bless.